Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. John Mayer. John Clayton Mayer is an American singer-songwriter, guitarist, and producer. He was born in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and raised in nearby Fairfield. He attended Berklee College of Music in Boston, but disenrolled and moved to Atlanta in 1997. With Clay Cook, together, they formed a short-lived two-man band called Lo-Fi Masters. After their split, Mayer continued to play local clubs, refining his skills and gaining a following. After his appearance at the 2001 South by Southwest Festival, he was signed to Aware Records, and then Columbia Records, which released his first EP, Inside Once Out. His following two full-length albums, Room for Squares, and Heavier Things, did well commercially, achieving multi-platinum status. In 2003, he won the Grammy Award for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance for the single, Your Body is a Wonderland. Though Mayer started his career mainly performing acoustic rock, he began moving towards the blues genre that had originally influenced him as a musician. By 2005, he was collaborating with blues artists such as B.B. King, Buddy Guy, and Eric Clapton. Forming the John Mayer Trio, he released a live album in 2005 called Try, and his third studio album Continuum in 2006. Both albums received wide critical acclaim, and Continuum earned Mayer a 2007 Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album. He also won Best Male Pop Vocal Performance for Waiting on the World to Change. That album was followed by Battle Studies in 2009, a return to pop, with a number one grossing tour. After having several controversial incidents with the media, Mayer withdrew from public life in 2010 and began work on the follow-up album, called Born, and raised that would draw inspiration from the 1970s pop music of Laurel Canyon. However, the discovery of a granuloma on his vocal cords delayed the release of the album until May 2012, and ultimately forced him to cancel the planned tour. Even so, the album enjoyed a generally favorable reception, though was less commercially successful than his previous work. After extensive treatments for his vocal problems and a two-year hiatus, Mayer began performing as a singer again in January. 2013, and that year released the album, Paradise Valley. The album is named for where he lives in Montana and features country music influences. By 2014, he had sold a total of over 20 million albums worldwide. After developing an interest in The Grateful Dead and connecting with Bob Weir, Mayer formed Dead & Company, with three former Grateful Dead musicians, after two well-received tours in the fall of 2015 and summer of 2016, the band has already committed to another tour for the summer of 2017. Mayer's secondary career pursuits extend to television hosting, comedy, and writing. He has authored columns for magazines such as Esquire. He supports various causes and has performed at charity benefits. He is a watch aficionado, and has been on the jury at the Grand Prix d'Orlogiri de Genève. He currently lives in Montana. His latest song is, Love on the Weekend. Early Life John Clayton Mayer was born on October 16, 1977 in Bridgeport, Connecticut to Richard and Margaret Mayer. He grew up in nearby Fairfield, the middle child between older brother Carl and younger brother Ben. His father is Jewish, and Mayer has said that he relates to Judaism. As a middle school student, Mayer became close friends with future tennis star James Blake, and they often played Nintendo together after school. He attended the Center for Global Studies at Brian McMahon High School in Norwalk for his junior year. After watching Michael J. 
Fox's guitar performances Marty McFly in Back to the Future, Mayer became fascinated with the instrument. When he turned 13, his father rented one for him. A neighbor gave Mayer a Stevie Ray Vaughan cassette, which cultivated Mayer's love of blues music. According to Mayer, his fascination with Vaughan started a genealogical hunt that led him to other blues guitarists, including Buddy Guy, B.B. King, Freddie King, Albert King, Otis Rush, and Lightning Hopkins. Mayer started taking lessons from a local guitar shop owner, Al Ferrante, and soon became consumed. His singular focus concerned his parents, and they twice took him to see a psychiatrist, who determined him to be healthy. Mayer says that his parents' contentious marriage led him to disappear and create my own world I could believe in. After two years of practice, he started playing at bars and other venues while still in high school. In addition to performing solo, he was a member of a band called Villanova Junction with Tim Procaccini, Joe Belesne, and Rich Wolf. When Mayer was 17, he was stricken with cardiac dysrhythmia and was hospitalized for a weekend. Reflecting on the incident, Mayer said, that was the moment the songwriter in me was born, and he penned his first lyrics the night he left the hospital. Shortly thereafter, he began suffering from panic attacks and says he feared having to enter a mental institution. He continues to manage such episodes with anti-anxiety medication. Early career, 1996-1999 Mayer considered skipping college to pursue his music, but his parents dissuaded him. He enrolled in the Berklee College of Music in 1997 at age 19. At the urging of his college friend Clay Cook, they left Berkeley after two semesters and moved to Atlanta. There, they formed a two-man band called Lofi Masters and began performing in local coffee houses and club venues such as Eddie's Attic. According to Cook, they experienced musical differences due to Mayer's desire to move more towards pop music. The two parted ways and Mayer embarked on a solo career. With the help of local producer and engineer Glenn Matullo, Mayer recorded the independent EP Inside Once Out. The EP includes eight songs with Mayer on lead vocals and guitars. For the opening track, Back to You, a full band was enlisted, including the EP's co-producer David Dealer, Labriere on bass guitars. Cook had co-written many of the album's songs, including its first commercial single release. No such thing. However, his only performance contribution was backing vocals on the song, Comfortable. Major label and commercial success, 2000-2004 Mayer and Labriere performed throughout Georgia and nearby states. Also, as his career coincided with the then nascent internet music market, Mayer benefited from an online following. A March 2000 appearance at the South by Southwest Music Festival brought him to the attention of Launch Label Aware Records. After including him in Aware Festival concerts and his songs on Aware compilations in early 2001, Aware released Mayer's internet-only album titled Room for Squares. During this time, Aware concluded a deal with Columbia Records that gave Columbia first pick in signing Aware artists. In September, Columbia remixed and re-released Room for Squares. As part of the major label debut, the album's artwork was updated, and the track 3x5 was added. The re-release included reworked studio versions of the first four songs from Inside Once Out. By the end of 2002, Room for Squares had spawned several radio hits, including No Such Thing, your Body is a Wonderland, and ultimately, Why Georgia? 
It also received general praise critically, and Mayer drew comparisons to Dave Matthews. In 2003, Mayer won a Grammy for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance for Your Body is a Wonderland. In his acceptance speech he remarked, This is very, very fast, and I promised to catch up. He also figuratively referred to himself as being 16, a remark that many mistook to mean that he was 16 years old at the time. In February 2003, Mayer released a live CD and DVD of a concert in Birmingham, Alabama titled Any Given Thursday, which included songs previously not recorded, such as Man on the Side, Something's Missing, and covered in rain. Commercially, the album peaked at number 17 on the Billboard 200 chart. Its accompanying DVD release received conservative, although consistent, praise, with critics torn between his pop idol image and emerging guitar prowess. Eric Crawford of All Music asked, Is Mayer the consummate guitar hero exemplified? when he plays a cover of Stevie Ray Vaughan's Lenny? Or is he the teen idol that the pubescent girls shriek for after he plays Your Body is a Wonderland? That summer, Mayer went on the road with Counting Crows in a tour that spanned 42 dates between July 7 and September 2. Heavier Things, Mayer's second album, was released in 2003 to generally favorable reviews. Rolling Stone, All Music and Blender all gave positive, although reserved, feedback. The album was commercially successful, and while it did not sell as well as Room for Squares, it peaked at number one on the US Billboard 200 chart. The song, Daughters, won the 2005 Grammy for Song of the Year and reached on the Billboard Adult Pop Songs chart and nine on the Billboard Hot 100. He dedicated the award to his grandmother, Annie Hoffman, who had died in May 2004. He also won Best Male Pop Vocal Performance. On February 9, 2009, Mayer told Ellen DeGeneres that he thought he should not have won the Grammy for Song of the Year, because he thought that Alicia Keys, If I Ain't Got You, was the better song. Because of this, he removed the top half of the Grammy and gave it to Keys, and kept the bottom part for himself. At the 37th Annual Songwriters Hall of Fame induction ceremony in 2006, Mayer received the Hal David Starlight Award. Mayer again recorded live concerts across seven nights of his U.S. tour in 2004. These recordings were released to the iTunes Store under the title as, Is indicating that the errors were included along with the good moments. A few months later, a Best Of CD was compiled from the As Is Nights. The album included a previously unreleased cover of Marvin Gaye's song, Inner City Blues, featuring a solo from Mayer's supporting act jazz and blues turntablist DJ Logic. The album covers of the As Is releases feature drawings of anthropomorphic bunnies. Change in Musical Direction, 2005 to 2008. As early as 2002, Chris Willman, with Entertainment Weekly, said that Mayer was more historically savvy and more ambitious than you'd guess from the unforced earnestness of Room for Squares. However, Mayer was largely associated with the adult contemporary and singer-songwriter genres. Fame allowed him access to his early influences, and he began collaborating with blues and jazz artists. He accompanied Buddy Guy in a concert at the Irving Plaza in December 2003. He toured with jazz pianist Herbie Hancock, including a show at the Bonnaroo Music Festival. He also performed on commercial releases, namely, with Eric Clapton, Buddy Guy, John Schofield, and B.B. King. Although Mayer maintained his reputation as a singer-songwriter, he gained distinction as a guitarist following the conclusion of his Heavier Things tour. 
Mayer began working with artists, including those from other genres of music. He voice was sampled on the song, Go By Rapper Common, and he appeared on Kanye West's A Hidden Track from the album Graduation, Bittersweet Poetry. The collaborations drew praise from rap heavyweights Jay-Z and Nelly. When asked about his presence in the hip-hop community, Mayer said, It's not music out there right now. That's why, to me, hip-hop is where rock used to be. Around this time Mayer began announced that he was closing up shop on acoustic sensitivity. In the spring of 2005, Mayer formed the John Mayer Trio with bassist Pino Palladino and drummer Steve Jordan, both of whom he had met through studio sessions. The trio combined blues and rock music. In October 2005 they opened for the Rolling Stones, and that November released a live album called Try. The band took a break in mid-2006. In 2006, Mayer's third studio album, titled Continuum, was released on September 12, 2006. Produced by Mayer and Steve Jordan, Mayer suggested the album was intended to combine blues and pop. In the vein, two of the tracks from his trio released Try, Vultures, and Gravity were included on Continuum. Despite his excitement, in a Rolling Stone interview, Mayer recalled that after former Columbia Records head Don Iana Pan Continuum, as a result, Mayer briefly considered quitting music and studying design full time. The first single from Continuum was Waiting on the World to Change, which debuted on the Ron and Fez show. The song was the third most downloaded song of the week on the iTunes Store following its release on July 11, 2006, and debuted at number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. On August 23, 2006, Mayer debuted the entire album on the Los Angeles radio station Star 98.7, offering commentary on each track. A subsequent version was released the next day on the Clear Channel Music website as a streaming Sneak preview. On September 21, 2006, Mayer appeared on CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, playing, Waiting on the World to Change and, Slow Dancing in a Burning Room. The song, Gravity, was featured on the television series House, in the episode, Cain and Abel, and Num 3 Rupees. He recorded a session for the British program live from Abbey Road, at Abbey Road Studios on October 22, 2006. On December 7, 2006, Mayer was nominated for five Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year. The trio received a nomination for Try. He won two, Best Pop Song with Vocal for, Waiting on the World to Change and Best Pop Album. For Continuum, Mayer remixed an acoustic version of his single, Waiting on the World to Change, with vocal additions from fellow musician Ben Harper. In preparation for Continuum, Mayer had booked the Village Recorder in Los Angeles to record five acoustic versions of his songs, with veteran musician Robbie McIntosh. These recordings became the Village Sessions. An EP released on December 12, 2006. As usual, Mayer oversaw the artwork. Mayer was featured on the cover of Rolling Stone in February 2007, along with John Frusciante and Derek Trucks. He was named as one of the New Guitar Gods, and the cover nicknamed him Slowhand Jr., a reference to Eric Clapton. The initial North American Continuum tour ended on February 28, 2007, with a show at Madison Square Garden that the New York Post described as career-defining. On November 20, 2007, the reissue of Continuum became available online and in stores. The release contained a bonus disc of six live songs from his 2007 tour, five from Continuum and a cover of the Ray Charles song, I Don't Need No Doctor. 
His new single, Say, became available through iTunes. On December 6, 2007, Believe was nominated for Best Male Pop Vocal for the 50th Annual Grammy Awards. He accompanied Alicia Keys on guitar on her song, No One at the Ceremony. Additionally, he was selected by the editors of Time magazine as one of the 100 most influential people of 2007. Listed among artists and entertainers. In February 2008, Mayer hosted a three-day Caribbean cruise event that included performances with various musicians including David Ryan Harris, Brett Denon, Colby Calais, and Dave Barnes, among others. The event was called the Maycraft Carrier and was held aboard the cruise ship known as the Carnival Victory. A follow-up cruise titled Maycraft Carrier 2 sailed from Los Angeles March 27-31. 2009 on the Carnival Splendor. On July 1, 2008, Mayer released Where the Light Is, a live concert film of Mayer's performance at the Nokia Theater LA Live on December 8, 2007. The film was directed by Danny Clinch. It features an acoustic set and a set with the trio, followed by a set with the band from the Continuum album. Battle Studies 2009 Australian artist Guy Sebastian invited Mayer to collaborate on three songs from his 2009 album Like It Like That. Mayer also played guitar on the title track of Crosby Loggins' debut LP, Time to Move. On July 7, 2009, Mayer performed an instrumental guitar version of Michael Jackson's Human Nature at Jackson's televised memorial service. He co-wrote Worlds of Chance with Demi Lovato for her second album Here We Go Again, released later that month. After the overwhelming success of Continuum, Mayer confessed to be intimidated with beginning on a follow-up. However, he stated, I think it got a lot easier when I realized that no matter what I do you, it's not going to be continuum, good or bad. On November 17, 2009, Mayer's fourth studio album, Battle Studies, debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 album chart. The first single, Who Says? was released on September 24, 2009 in advance of the album, followed on October 19 by Heartbreak Warfare and Half of My Heart on June 21, 2010. The accompanying arena tour grossed 45 million. Despite the album's commercial success, critics' reactions were mixed. Some reviews glowed, calling it his most adventurous Others called the album safe and noted that Mayer the singer-songwriter and Mayer the man about town sometimes seem disconnected, like they don't even belong in the same body. Mayer admitted to Rolling Stone that he thought Battle Studies was not his best album. Personal Troubles and Hiatus 2010-2013 Following two revealing and highly controversial magazine interviews in February 2010, with Rolling Stone and Playboy magazines, Mayer withdrew from public life and ceased giving interviews. While still on tour for Battle Studies, he began work in earnest on his fifth studio album, which drew on the popular music of Laurel Canyon. In the early 1970s, Around this time, he began to experience vocal problems and sought medical assistance. On September 16, 2011, he posted on his blog that his next record, Born and Raised, would be delayed due to treatment he was receiving for a granuloma discovered on his vocal cords. Mayer described the event as a temporary setback and added that the album was entirely finished except for a few vocal tracks. A month later, on October 20, 2011, Mayer posted, I had surgery this afternoon to remove it. 
and am now on complete vocal rest for a month or more, during which he planned to travel the country, look, and listen. However, the surgery did not work as expected, and he had to undergo another one at August. During his travels, he visited and fell in love with Bozeman, Montana, where he bought a house and resettled in the spring of 2012. With his treatments complete, Mayer finished the vocals on Born and Raised, and the album's first single, Shadow Days, was released on February 27, 2012. The following day, he released the track listing for the album, announcing that it would be released on May 22 of that year. He described it as his most honest album, and began booking dates at more intimate venues and for battle studies. He also accepted an invitation to appear at the South by Southwest Festival. However, the Granuloma returned, and on March 9, 2012, Mayer announced that he had been forced to cancel his tour and refrain from all singing indefinitely. Even so, Born and Raised was released as scheduled and entered the Billboard 200 chart at number 1, selling 219,000 copies in its first week. It also received generally positive critical feedback. Rolling Stone rated it number 17 on its list of the 50 best albums of 2012, and People magazine called it a shimmering album. Meanwhile, Mayer brought a new focus to his guitar playing and, fearing that his vocal cords had been permanently damaged, tried to come to terms with a possible future as a session musician. Determined to be cured, he sought help from the UCLA Voice Center. That September, otolaryngologist Dr. Gerald Berker paralyzed Mayer's vocal cords with a series of high-dose Botox injections hoping that they would allow the granuloma to heal. Mayer's vocal rest extended to several months and, unable to even talk, his performances were limited to accompanying other artists on guitar. He appeared in September 2012 on Saturday Night Live, where he joined musical guest Frank Ocean. He played with the Rolling Stones in New Jersey in December 2012. By January 2013, Mayer had recovered sufficiently enough to perform at a benefit concert in Bozeman. After almost two years without singing publicly, in April 2013, he made an appearance at the Crossroads Guitar Festival and at the 28th Annual Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, where he inducted the late Albert King. A show at the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater in Alabama on April 25, 2013, followed by a set at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival the next day, marked his first full-length concerts since his health troubles. Paradise Valley and Dead and Company, 2013-2016 in Brooklyn, New York, on December 17, 2013. In June 2013, Mayer announced that he was finishing work on his sixth album, Paradise Valley. Produced by Don Was, the album features low-key folk rock tunes. He collaborated with Frank Ocean on the song, Wildfire PT, 2 and with Katy Perry on, Who You Love. The latter song would go on to become the album's third single, and an accompanying music video was released on December 17. On June 18, 2013, he released a lyric video for the album's first single, Paper Doll, on his official YouTube page. The album was released August 20, 2013, and, meeting with positive reviews, debuted at number 2 on the Billboard 200 chart, with first week sales of 145,560 copies in the United States. Mayer embarked on a tour, his first in three years, in support of Born and Raised in Paradise Valley. The American leg of the tour ran from July to December 2013.
with Interscope recording artist Philip Phillips serving as support act. The tour visited Australia in April 2014, during a concert in Adelaide. Mayer covered the Beyoncé song, XO. One month later, on May 22, he released a studio version of the song on his SoundCloud account. It was made available for digital download by Columbia Records on May 27, 2014 through the iTunes Store. For the week ending June 1, 2014, Mayer's version debuted at number 90 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart and number 13 on the U.S. Hot Rock Songs chart. On the Canadian Hot 100, XO peaked at a position of 76. The single also peaked at number 81 on the Australian Singles Chart and at number 95 on the Dutch Singles Chart. In the UK, it peaked at 115 on the UK Singles Chart. Mayer recorded the song, Come Rain, or Come Shine, as a duet with Barbara Streisand for her album Partners. Released in September the 2014, in February the 2015, Mayer performed alongside Ed Sheeran at the Grammy Awards. As of March, he was working on a deeply personal new album. Mayer recounted that in 2011 he happened upon a song by The Grateful Dead while listening to Pandora, and that soon the band's music was all he would listen to. In February 2015, while guest hosting The Late Late Show, Mayer invited Grateful Dead guitar player Bob Weir to join him in a studio performance. Weir, Mickey, Hart, and Bill Kreutzmann were preparing for their Fare Thee Well, celebrating 50 years of the Grateful Dead tour, and invited Mayer to join them. He began practicing the band's catalogue of songs that August. They formed the group Dead & Company, along with Jeff Pimenti and Hotel Burbridge, and began a fall tour in the United States. The tour was well received, and they continued to tour the U.S. into 2016. The Search for Everything, 2016 Present As a result of his touring with Dead & Company, Mayer postponed working on his next studio album until January 2016, with plans to finish it by the end of the year. On November 17, 2016 Mayer released Love on the Weekend as the lead single from his EP The Search for Everything, Wave 1, which was then released on January 20, 2017. A second EP, The Search for Everything, Wave 2, was released on February 24, 2017. He plans to continue touring in 2017 as part of Dead & Company on the Dead & Company Summer Tour 2017. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.